the meeting started, uh, our city clerk, would you call the roll? Dave Abdallah. Here. Thomas Berry. Here. Robert Constant. Here. Lisa Hicks Clayton. Here. Margaret Horvath. Is absent. Joseph Kosinski. Here. Ray Muscat. Here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. And let's keep Councilwoman Horvath in our thoughts and prayers. She's recovering after some additional uh, chemotherapy. I spoke to her today and uh, she would be here if she could. Uh, uh, we'll have our Economic Development Director, Joe Hashem, lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the next item on our agenda is a uh, presentation of a uh, certificate from Michigan Municipal League for uh, Councilwoman Talk about somebody's ego. I'm going to bring my kindergarten teacher once a see. Uh, and achieving her uh, uh, level two leadership award from the Michigan Municipal League. Congratulations. And may I say just a word or two? Please. Just real brief. Um, I want to say I really appreciate the opportunity as I continue, as continue my education in leadership. The, the first level was education. The second level is leadership. And I think it's really important as elected officials that we continue our education because it gives us the tools to better represent you as elected officials and to serve in the capacity that we're elected to do so. So again, thank you. I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kaczynski. I move that the agenda for this day uh, for the City Council of Dearborn Heights be approved as submitted. Second. Second by Councilman Abdullah. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the June 13, 2017 meeting. Mr. Chairman. Councilwoman Clayton. I move to approve the minutes for June 13, 2017, regular meeting at Dearborn Heights City Council as outlined in 4A. Is there support? Support, support. by Councilman Kaczynski. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. The next item on the agenda is public comment from uh, residents on pending agenda items, items on the agenda. Anybody have any comments on items pending on our agenda tonight? Hearing none, the next item on the agenda, item six, fund transfers and current claims. Mr. Chair. Councilman Berry. Motion to approve current claim 61 through 636. Second. Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. The next item on the agenda, item 7A, advertisement for bids for exercise equipment for the police department. Mr. Chairman. Councilwoman Clayton. I move to concur with Police Chief Lee Gavin and approve the request to go out for bids for the items listed in agenda 7A. Second. Second, Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Any <clears throat> discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. The next item on the agenda, item 8A, reports from the mayor, from Mayor Paletko, extension of agreements for the Dearborn Heights Police Officers Union and the Dearborn Heights Supervisors Union. Mr. Mr. Chair. Councilman Berry. Both oh, City Council concur and extend the agreements of the Dearborn Heights Police Officers Union and the Dearborn Heights uh, Supervisors Union uh, on a day-to-day -day basis until a new agreement is reached and approved as outlined in 8A. Support. Support by... Uh, Councilman Musket, any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor of extending the agreements, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. The next item on the agenda, item 9A, reports from city <clears throat> officials 
from Community and Economic Development Director Joe Hasham, City Action Preservation Plan. <coughs> Mr. Chair. Councilman Barry. I move City Council concur with Director Hasham and approve the establishment of the City Action Preservation Plan Program and approve the right of first refusal to obtain properties from the Wayne County Land Bank for rehabilitation and sale by the CEDD approved contractors under the City Action Preservation Plan program as outlined in 9A. Support. Support by uh, Councilman Musket. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Uh, uh. So I had, I had a couple, of, I went through the contract and I had a couple of questions or clarifications for uh, Joe Hashem, if you don't mind. Sure. Director Hashem. Um, so Director, I had a couple of questions. On um, the selected firms, the, I just want to get a clarification as to the why eight, no, no less than eight, and no more than 12. These firms, they, this is on clause number five. Selected firms shall acquire a minimum of eight and up to a maximum of 12 single family homes that will be rehabilitated, redeveloped, and sold. So I was just curious as to the thought process behind, behind the eight and 12. Well, this came about by, uh, actually we developed this by meeting with other economic development uh, directors, uh, basically down river, uh, Redford, Livonia, and what have you. And they all had limitation of how many houses an individual or a company can buy. And that's basically to make sure that they can do the job well done uh, with a, with, within the timetable. So you're making okay. sure it's larger companies based. So, but an individual. It's a larger company. They can be investors. They can well, be but I'm saying it's eight houses minimum. So obviously. It's I'm saying eight houses, they got to put $25,000 in escrow or they have to have home. that money uh, uh, available already. We don't want somebody to buy these houses and get stuck and not finish them. Not be able to, Not yeah. be able to finish the rehabs and sell them. They have to sell them to a homestead uh, resident. Right. And that was my next question. On the 25000 that 25000 was over and above the purchase well, price. Well, no, that's for... And they have to have that in escrow for the repairs. Yes. And then the purchase price would be over and above that. Yeah, that has nothing to do with the Separate. price. Separate, okay. Absolutely. And then I also had... Uh, There's some typos in there, so don't mind me on that, because we had... There's some what? Typos. Oh, no, no, we it's okay. this quickly. It has to go to an attorney. To right, right, no, absolutely. So um, on uh, clause number eight, you had on there, uh, there's a 60-day clause, which is a third one coming down. Uh, remaining unsold rehabilitated properties are eligible for land contract terms only within 60 days from the end date of this contract. So I just want to get that clarified. I just want to get a clarification on that. You're talking about they could not sell it cash, then they could sell it land contract? No, no, they can sell it cash. They can sell it for a mortgage, I'm saying. For a mortgage, regular mortgage. In case they get stuck with these houses and nobody has the ability to buy them, then they can write a land contract that will be equitable to what the bank would give them. If right. interest, for, uh, interest rate is around five, let's say 5%, they can't charge you 10% and just gouge the people. So my main question to you was, so hypothetically a, a company rehabs eight, nine, 10, 12, whatever houses, and they want to sell them on land, on land contract right off the bat, would that be allowed or that would no, not be allowed? No, they have to go through the procedure first. They have to basically try to sell them, on them mortgage. out. And we do have a very long spreadsheet that we keep track of every house and what happens to it. Right, but I'm just wondering why can't they sell a land contract right off the bat? I think that's just from the wisdom of other economic developments that they have gone through this program. This is my first year going through it. Sure. They have gone through it for the last 10, 15 years, and they've seen ups and downs, and basically they said, okay. you know, you're more likely to hold on to a house if you have a mortgage than if you have a land contract. I mean, that's even from my banking background. If you have a mortgage, you're more likely to hold on to your house and make your payments on time. A land contract, you can always walk away from it with kind of a little bit of lesser mm -hmm. effect or lesser. Yeah. Okay. And then on, on clause number nine under the recapture uh, provision, um, going through that, um, if, um, <coughs> here, well, let me read. Uh, In the event a firm does uh, not meet the required deadlines or other contract provisions without express written approval from community development staff, the acquired properties will be transferred back to Redford Township. Uh, that's a typo. That's, uh, so we had to copy, copy and paste. So okay, so it's not Redford. That. No, no, it has okay. to do with that. I, I, I was trying to clarify why Redford. No, no, and there's one at the very end also. It says, uh, it says 
township should be city, so I okay. apologize for that. No, no, okay, no, I just wanted to clarify why I read I wanted to rush this through. No, that's fine, as long as it's a typo, that's fine. It. Eventually, it has to go to an attorney for him to give us his advice and put some legal language in there as well. Right, So, and, and I'll tell you, everything I've heard about these types of projects is a good thing for the city, because you're getting companies that are coming in here, what rehabbing I these homes, Thank they you. Typically, in general, do a very good job of it, and the fact that you're putting conditions that it has to be owner-occupied, obviously, just is is even another shot in the arm for the, for the city. So it's good stuff. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, uh, okay. should we um, should we include in here uh, refer to for referral to I don't the attorney? Think, I think here Final we will review this. I'm not sure if Gary would. I've but that's previously looked at something similar. I have serious reservations regarding these types of programs, which I believe I... Well, we I know you have serious with. reservations, but we sort of want to move forward with it, but we'd like to look at oh, the language on it. Oh, it's your choice. It. I mean, you don't that's have right. to follow my advice. Yeah, it's, um, it's our choice. Exactly. So, no, but and Mayor, does Harry Caligaros, does he do... Is there someone different that do, reviews our CDBG stuff? No, Harry does. Harry. Harry? Right. So would it go to him or would it go to our corp counsel? Well, I, I, would, I would want to get Gary's input for the simple reason that when you make your decision and whether you wish to follow his advice or not, I think you should get his points, although I think I have his points from last time. So I guess we're going to probably have two attorneys looking at yeah. it. Let's Mr. Chair, Councilman, so, so well, oh, I'd have to change the motion to refer it back to um, corporate counsel for review and approval upon um, review. Well, how much time do we have? We've got to be off. Three days. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I'm just, I'm just wondering because I mean, if if it's going to happen, regardless of what my advice would be, and I did have very serious reservations regarding these programs. Um, I mean, I can look at it in terms of form and just basically send everyone an, uh, the, an email with regards to well, my concerns. In, um, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. And I apologize, Mr. Council. Um, I understand the concerns. I know that I've gone down this road with Council before, um, and I know that the programs we had in the past, um, we've learned a lot from them. I still think that there are um, opportunities out here to help ourselves and I think we have somebody in place now uh, that can grab this wrap his arms around this and make this work well one of the things that's helpful is having three people instead of one who ends up basically getting a uh, an exclusive right to end up dealing um, I mean it's uh, well that's going to be based on a number of homes too that are available so we don't know today if there are eight homes or if there's 200 homes so there may come up with only five right and some of it's going to be a matter of which homes, because a lot of times what they do is they want to cherry pick the homes that they can, and then we have a potential problem because the county will end up saying that we're using this as a process to end up avoiding our responsibilities to give them money back through the revolving fund. Well, um, and they know that argument, so I that's part of my right. concern with, with regard to these, that essentially the county knows that these things are happening, they happen in Allen Park, they happen in Taylor. Yes. And you call I it a neighborhood just... restabilization program if you want, but I mean, really, that's what we want to do rather than, you know. Um... Well, you know, I'll, I can just point out my, my concerns, but I'll put together an appropriate uh, agreement <clears throat> and probably use the Redford Township one as a model. We can get a word version of it. Uh, I met with Mike Dennis, Mike Dennis, and I talked to him like for a long time about this project. And he has, a lot, he has had a lot of success with this particular project. And they do cherry pick, so I apologize for that. They do pick some houses and leave others. But at the beginning, keep in mind that all of these houses are going to win county land bank anyway, regardless. Is it going to so go to someone? if you pick 10 houses out of oh, 30. No, no it's, 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 even though they'll go to the land bank, then the, the county's issue is potentially we sell it for something less than fair market value by virtue of a quick claim deed to these contractors who have an exclusive right of dealing. And then essentially what they end up doing is they turn around and sell it for significantly more than fair market value. If we did that, the additional value beyond the amount of taxes and everything would have to be paid back over to the county. What they do then is essentially make a profit on the difference between how much we have to pay for the tax foreclosed property through the tax foreclosure process and what 
would ordinarily be our share to send back over to the county. And the other thing that I'm interested in is what do we do with places that are already occupied? Well, and, and, and do we end up getting ourselves into a position with regard to tenants who are left over in the property uh, under those circumstances and whether or not we have a, a process in place with regard to that. Taylor developed some pretty sophisticated procedures with regard to that, but it made it almost sound even more kind of like, especially with an exclusive dealing sort of situation, more problematic. You're talking about so, the holdover okay. owners? Go ahead. The let, holdover let me, owners let, who basically have lost due to the tax foreclosure sale and now are potentially staying in the premises with the idea that they need to be evicted and then we're in a position where we're turning over the property to someone else if indeed that's the case then maybe we need to end up having these people also assume the responsibility to end up evicting these individuals with regard to that your comment regarding these properties going back to the land bank the land bank does not have any stipulation in it that requires those properties once they're sold to become um to become um um, homestead. homestead. Occupied. Right. Correct. But in this program here, we are requiring homestead in it. So that's why I think there's a greater value to us controlling yeah, our they, destiny rather than them. I'm sorry. And they did that in Taylor. And then after they did it, they rushed it through. And then they came back and got an addendum to change it so that they could end up making them into rental properties. Well, I, and that, that's, you know, that's, that's part cool. of the difficulties. I don't know that the economics, <clears throat> but, you know. I've, I respect. I've, I've previously said, but it's 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 the council and the mayor's decision with regard to that, and I will make it work the best I can. Thank you. But make sure I air my concerns <clears throat> so to you, sure. to yourselves. I um I amended my motion to refer this to council for review and approval upon uh, his approve review his, uh, on his review. So I have. Well, just say have me approve the the document as opposed to approve it in general, since you're approving this in general. So move. Okay. And it's sure. okay, Councilman Abdullah. I so I'd, 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 uh, uh, I had a couple questions, if you don't mind. Oh, go ahead. Okay. So the first things first is the corporate council mentioned they had some reservations, and I, for one, would like to hear what those reservations are, if you don't mind. Yeah, I prepared a rather lengthy, um, uh, Chrissy, I think I sent it over to, uh, there are, I mean, part of the concerns are that if I say them they'll, in, in a public forum, someone could turn around and end up. Right. Can you email them to us? Yeah, we, oh, sure. Let's the get the uh, document of... to you with his. Okay, because I'd like, I for one, would like to read it. That's one. Two, um, we had a situation. There was a situation that was all over Westland. I believe it was the city of Westland that had a situa similar situation with us with the eviction uh, process as far as getting people out and people losing their properties to a tax foreclosure. And then I know there was some uh, class action suits, if I'm not mistaken, um, against the city. So in your provisions, I would want, I, I would prefer something in there to protect us as a city. And then, of course, respect the resident situation too. I mean, we don't want to throw residents out either. That's obviously got to be worked out, but just keep the Westland situation in mind. Um, I know it was all over the news and there was it some, go anywhere, and it didn't go anywhere, but nevertheless, we should address those particular situations. I don't remember the details of it, but it was pretty. Was it Garden City? It was, or was Garden it City. Was it Garden City? Maybe yeah. it was Garden City. Yeah, I think it was Garden City now that you mentioned it. Yeah, it was all over the news. It was last winter sometime. And then the third issue, you mentioned in there that, uh, not you mentioned, I'm sorry, it's mentioned in there that they cannot rent it out. And to me, if that's the case, then there should be a provision in there, uh, some sort of a deed restriction, because if, like, let's say I'm just, just throwing it out there, uh, John Doe purchases the property and then quit claim deeds it back to a, a totally different person, you know, X, Y, Z, or, you know, person X, Y, Z, that that person, that person's not bound by the same contract. It's not. Right. And I did talk to other economic developments about that, and they said that does happen occasionally. However, I would take the uh, council's advice on this and maybe put some provision. I don't know. If you know, you I, put I think that, but if it does happen, it does well, happen. There's certain things you can control. In, in well, you can't, no, you, can't, you can't put it in a deed because you can put a deed restriction on anything that you sell as long as you don't discriminate. Okay. I think the last time we did it, we re we required that it be held for two years. Yeah, no deed transfers for two years. A year yeah. and a half here. For so many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no deed transfers for two years or a year and a half or whatever. Oh, after they sell it? 
No, no. Once the property is purchased, oh, yeah. okay, so it's purchased by XYZ rehabbed, Corp sure. to rehab eight houses. Based on the fact that we have a provision in here, or at least a proposal in here, that they cannot rent it, what I am saying is it would be very easy for company XYZ to purchase it, close the deal, rehab the home, and then sell it to Joe Kaczynski, not you, but just in general, uh, I mean, a uh, quick claim deed it to Joe Kaczynski, which is what their, what their intention was all along, all along, and then he could rent it out now at that particular point. And there's nothing to stop him from doing that. Um, Unless we had a deed restriction where there could be no deed transfers and I for a certain amount of time. It's in there already that we do it have a lien on It's, it's not in there. There's a lien. We have the city of Dublin Heights has a lien on those properties. Therefore, you can sell it. We're still in first position. Yeah, but would that would that would that become uh, that that would now become not an arm's length transaction? Am I correct in saying that? Well, a lot of times I mean I'm talking about where people yeah, yeah from day know, one they have it set up. Where you're you're going to give me I'm going to buy it from you on the land contract, and we're really partners, and I'm just going to rent it out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. We'll find out what others. If it's that important. Like to get the, you know uh, Council Mayatki's uh, opinion on this, and maybe help me put some more. Uh, meet into this as far as conditions and protection like or something and like that. Sure, I'll, I'll try to do what I, and I can I'll, in the time. And sure. lastly, in terms of you mentioned them cherry picking, banks do that all the time where they sell property. So, you know, Bank ABC has, you know, 20 foreclosures. They'll sell them to an investor as a bundle, and you take the whole cart, everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. So that's another option. Yeah. Yeah, they have somebody acquire them as a bundle, which they're getting the good ones, but they're going to also take the bad ones with it. That's a good idea. So we'll check it out. All right, any further discussion? Isn't this uh, the issue that requires uh, owner occupancy? That's what we were talking about. That's what yeah, we were discussing. Yes. Yeah. If an owner comes in <coughs> and occupies, how, how, would he, how, would he have the, how would he have the privilege of renting? And it, would there then be a requirement for a deed restriction? And, and you're talking about a limited de deed restriction for a short period of time. Whatever yeah, time. It must be owner occupied for two years or, or something like that. We'll find out what other cities do, what other. Well, other cities, once the house is sold to a third party, an independent third party, then that's when they lose track of the situation to be honest with you you can only carry this for so long and control it for so long and uh, you know I, I agree with the council uh, council Matke. the six months rehab and then you have a year to sell this to a homestead and then after you sell that house you have no control just like if you were to went to Wayne County, for example, you really don't have any control after that unless so we consider a, a required two-year homestead on it Pardon? Unless we required a two-year homestead on it, like we did but in the past, two-year owner-occupied. Two-year two owner-occupied. And we can probably do that, um, but that might scare some people off who are buying these houses. But I'm not sure. I mean, that's something that I'll throw back and take advice from you. Yeah. Well, uh, Maybe we could see what other cities do. Go ahead, well, Corporation again, Council. I'm looking at July is when we would end up having to have this set and ready. I would, I would assume. So we're kind of in a tight time frame to be able to look at this at the very end well, maybe for future for future uh, well I want to I can personally I want to know what what our time frame is because that means I might have to meet with mr. Hashem on I'm not sure when what may, what, may I suggest night, night. may I suggest maybe if if you were to review this and get the language straight and if there were any um, if there were any um, amendments to it we could bring amendments back um, and include them as we move forward? Well, we could have the request for proposals and then basically end up having like a form contract in place, and then the council could end up selecting the individuals who would end up basically having the contract. I mean, that would be my sense of what should be done, and then it would, could be three different firms to be able to end up doing this. That at least would avoid some of the difficulties that I have in these situations. I, what is a county's dead, well, July, isn't it? Is July first is when the list comes out, and July first is when the list comes out. We have to we have to end up doing something within, and I forgot the number of days. Is John here? Nope. Uh, it, it's it's days relatively days. short. Yeah. It's like ten days or something along those lines, and the city has to end up saying, okay, we want these properties. And ordinarily, what you're looking at in these situations is what happens is is the contractor basically says, these are the say fifteen properties that we're interested in 
uh, if the state does not end up using its first right of refusal, which it almost never does, then it goes to us. We basically say to the county, these are the 15 properties that we want. We pay the minimum bid, and uh, then we go from, from there through the whole process. I don't know if there's anything in here, uh, and I, I haven't looked at it, I'm sorry. Um, it says, that says uh, anything about the the the, uh, the firm having to have back. sufficient? Yes, they do. Okay. They have to show us either a line of credit from a reputable bank, obviously, or they have to put the escrow money in the bank, and they have to pay us back within five days, so the city is not out of the money. Right. The the money is coming from the investor or the contractor. Or okay. It's in there, but that's. Uh, yeah, and that that would be something that we would need sure. to look at, but. Looking so, at a tight time vote. Any any further discussion? No. All right. And were there was support from Councilman Kaczynski, or there was no support? Well, I amended my original motion, and I needed a second. Support. So, support. So there's a support. Support there. by Councilman uh, uh, Can you Savage? Can you give us the motion because it sounded like it was approved, subject to council approval. Yeah. Go, so you can want to give us the motion? So, motion so I move City Council approved. No. I'm, Approve the contract between, yeah. No, so I move City Council approve the establishment of the City Action Preservation Plan program and approve the right of first refusal to obtain properties from Wayne County Land Bank for rehabilitation and sale by CEDD approval contractors under the City Action Preservation Plan program as outlined in 9A and refer this back to counts, corporate council for uh, language review and, and uh, approval to support. Pressure. Support by Councilman Abdullah. Any further discussion? Did you get all that, Mr. Kirk? I'm sorry. Would that no. include the. That was basically the last paragraph, just how they had it listed. Would that, would that involve the contract as, as well? Any of the contracts for the three contractors? Just because our time frames are such, I mean, I'm well, not sure we can do the RFP, get the thing, and then. I'm not going to get that back by July 1st. Yeah. How, how can we approve it? And then add stipulations for amend later. It? You can always amend. To be oh, reviewed by Corporation Council, you said refer back, but you haven't seen it yet, so to refer to Corporation Council. How can we approve this the way it sits? Well, he's gonna he's going Subject to, to his review. review. It. He's gonna review it and it's it's a language is what it is. So take out the um, Okay. Take out the typos clarification that they're gonna have to create a contract. Any further? Just did uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Clerk. Did you want that one more time or no? No, Mr. Chairman, we're good. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please state aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you. The next item on the agenda, item 9B, from Recreation Director Ken Greibel, Parkland Park Tennis Court Restoration Project, Contractors Contract. Don't know speak at once. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this. I, it's Sorry, the last, Mr. Chairman. It's, the last, it's right there. It says approve the yeah. contract between. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Councilwoman Moved Clayton. to approve the contract provided in 9B. This is for the uh, tennis courts at Parkland Park. Total amount is $15,985. The contract is attached as outlined in 9B. And authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign the agreement on behalf of the city. That, yes, and that is Support. in the language, yes. Support by Councilman Musket. Any discussion? Glad you caught that at the page four. Mm -hmm. Any any discussion? It's on here. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> those opposed, the ayes have it. The next item on the agenda, item 9C, from Comptroller John Lobb, budget amendments. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilman Kaczynski. I move Council concur with the request of Comptroller Lobb and uh, approve the budgetary amendments uh, uh, listed in 9C to conform to the actual expenses uh, for your end purposes. Support. Support by Councilwoman Clayton. Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. 
The next item on the agenda, item 9B from Administrative Assistant Christine Laszlo, purchase agreement for eight <coughs> Hanover properties under the Hazard Mitigation Grant. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kaczynski. I move council concur with the uh, mayor and uh, with the support of Christy Laszlo uh, and approve all of the uh, contracts as indicated in uh, 9D, uh, numbering eight. Uh, these agreements are signed by the mayor and the clerk uh, for the appropriate signatures, all per 9D. Support. Supported by Councilman Barry. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair. Councilman Abdullah. Uh, Christina, all the appraisals are in, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, can you amend your vote in the further offer for John Riley? It's 2500 Yeah. Cost it's oh, yeah. similar similar to the last closings that we had where we had the closing costs not to exceed 2500 anything below they're authorized to move forward with anything above we have to approve is it is it in here yep. it's in the so back way he said as yeah, outlined in 9d so he covered it and i understand exactly what you're saying yes sir yeah. there is a limitation of 2500 dollars for closing mm -hmm. costs that support uh, that's a part support. of support you. any further discussion hearing none all those in favor of concurring with Administrative Assistant Christine Laszlo? I'm sorry, I have to interrupt, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Christina, uh, there's no, it, it, are these the final homes? Is it done now? Over with? No additional homes left? Because they're all the same streets, so it gets a little confusing what's left and what's not. These are the final of the primary homes. We have alternate homes and with the prices coming in and the cost of the grant on um, the demolitions have come in less we do have a little bit money once i get state approval from the grant to go to the alternates then which are across telegraph um uh, west of telegraph okay so that's that, but that's a whole different phase for the, but for the ones on hanover would, this would finalize everything this would finalize that block if everybody accepts they still have an opportunity to accept or reject but yes, right yes. right okay thank you any further discussion? Hearing none, all those uh, in favor of concurring with Administrative Assistant Christine Laszlo regarding the purchase agreement for the eight Hanover properties under the Hazard Mitigation Grant, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. The next item on the agenda from Police Chief Lee Gavin, repairs to the HVAC system at the Justice Center. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kaczynski. I move council concur with uh, Police Chief Gavo, uh, Gavin regarding the uh, payment for the expenses of repair of the HVA system in the criminal justice uh, uh, complex. Uh, the expenses uh, in total cost are $4,525 and should be divided as indicated in item 9D, dated June 12, 2017. Support. Support by Councilman Abdullah. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of concurring with Police Chief Lee Gavin regarding the repairs to the HVA system at the Justice Center, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. The next item on the agenda also from Chief Gavin, purchase of four cannon uh, cameras and four ProMaster speed lights Mr. for Canon. Mr. Councilman Chair. Musket. Uh, I, I move that Council approve the purchase and payment for four Canon uh, cameras, four ProMaster speed light for Canon. Uh, total cost $3,592 and will be purchased from the ProCam photo and video gear. The money will come out of the Police Department repair and maintenance account as outlined in 9F. Support. Support by Councilman Clayton. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Councilman Barry. This, has, this doesn't have anything to do with this electronics here, but um, Ms. Laszlo, I, I, we have a copier, I think, in your office still under wrap. Who is that for? I should have called you and asked you. I forgot about it until I saw this. We still have two copiers under wrap, one in my office and one in HR. We're waiting on the phone system. The one I have is the comptroller's office and the HR is HR. The, um, the other copiers have since died and we've 
gone to put them in, but they don't have the fax capabilities. So as long as they're working, those offices kind of need their faxes. So. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of concurring with Chief Gavin regarding the purchase of the Canon cameras and speed lights for Canon cameras, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. The next item on the agenda, item 11A from Corporation Counsel Gary Miatke, second reading of proposed ordinance H-17-03. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilman Kaczynski. Move Council uh, concur. <coughs> With a request to uh, have the uh, ordinance H1703 read for the second time and become effective upon appropriate publication. Support. Support by Councilman Berry. Any discussion? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Cou uh, Councilor Miatke. Yeah, just note that this version is just slightly different based on discussions. Uh, it says that the employee must file with the city honor before June 29, 2017 at 5 p.m. an election to retire from employment with the city, which was consistent with the discussions the last time. Other than that, it's the same exact ordinance. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. No by Councilman Musket and five yeses. The next item on the agenda, communications from uh, uh, City Clerk Walter Persevich. The uh, Great Lakes Water Authority uh, rates regarding fiscal year 2018, uh, schedule of charges for wholesale water and sewage. Councilman Berry. Um, I believe this is a received note and file. Correct. Move City Council receive note and file agenda item 12A from the Great Lakes Water Authority regarding the 2018 wholesale water schedule charges of charges uh, as outlined in 12A. Second. Second by Councilman Kaczynski. Any discussion? I thank the clerk for calling to this to my attention and we've got it on the agenda. Any further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I think it's notable that uh, the original uh, budget projection for this uh, increase was a 4% increase, and it uh, settled down to 2%, maybe an indication of this new arrangement with the GLA, uh, this Great Lakes uh, Water Authority. Hopefully there will be further reductions in all of the expenses across the board for water, in spite of it being a bargain at this, uh, at this rate. Thank you. Any further discussion or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of receiving note and filing the uh, rate schedule, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. I think officially you were receiving noting and filing. You were not approving it, but that's. Yeah. yeah I thought that's what I, I said. Received yeah, we received note and filed. Received note and filed. That was a motion. All those in favor, just aye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next item on the agenda under new business, item 13A, business license renewals for high grade steakhouse and Warren Valley Golf and Banquet Center. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Councilman well, Kaczynski. Move that the council approve the renewal of licensing uh, as indicated in item 13A. Support. Support by Councilman Berry. Uh, uh, any discussion, Councilman Abdullah? Yeah. First, yeah. yeah. Councilman so, Berry. Yeah, I, I've, I've got a problem with supporting this because when we look at, I mean, for high grades, that's fine. Everything looks good. Everything is on time. Um, but for the Warren Valley, there's a problem here, and there's a, occur, a reoccurring problem. I don't know why, where, who, what, but we are. they've owned, I know we're in the process of possibly purchasing it, and I know we're doing the due diligence, but they've owned, since September of last year, their bill has been between the low of fifteen to 16000 and then the high of 24000 And so I got, I got a problem with approving. Mr. Chair. They're relicensing when they owe that big of an amount and when, and when the amount could be paid by whether, I think it's the county that would pay that, is that correct? I know there's an agreement, but for $500, but that, uh, to me that's well, not. I, I think what we, what we discussed at a previous meeting was um, Whatever the cost is that they are behind, we will, we will deduct that from the payment to them for that. Of course, we will bring the agreement. Purchase. Yeah, correct. 
but at the same time, the purchase of Warren Valley is still not set in stone because we're still doing our due diligence. So there is a possibility, hypothetically, four, five, six months later, we don't purchase this. And meanwhile, even without this Warren Valley situation right now, purchasing it, this has been going on since last year. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the county that pays this, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so to me, we put them under the gun. We say we're not renewing your license until you pay your seven. They owe now fourteen thousand five hundred and eight. I, I, I mean, here's my theory about this: if this was John Doe restaurant owner, we would not renew it for him. So there should be no difference, in, in my opinion. So let me ask you: I understand your position, and to be quite honest with you, I support it. So let's play this out. Let's not renew their license. Mm -hmm. What happens? At that point, the county pays it. The county's not paying you right now. What do you mean? Okay, well, then, then we force their hand. I mean, to, How, to me, but, but have, but don't, complete the process, excuse me. Repeat, complete the process right now so you force their hand. You approach the county and you tell them that if you don't pay this bill, we're shutting you down. And we're not that what we're doing? License. We, that's why I would do it. Well, I know that's the way we do, but wait, do we have the mechanism to do that? Not to shut them down. We're just not going to renew their license. So it doesn't prevent them from operating. Well, then they're operating illegally. Then at that particular point, council would uh, what? have to determine what the next well, step is from a legal standpoint. Two, two, two questions, yes. Mayor. So number one, um, do we know is there a management company that's responsible at least submitting the bill that's running the banquet facility? The bill is made out to Wayne County. It's Wayne County's obligation. And then secondly, we have other mechanisms in place to foreclose for, for and on unpaid water bills. One being not renewing their business license, but we have other uh, buying the, a lien and so forth. The, the strongest power that we have in regards to delinquent water or sewage bills is the fact that it becomes a lien on the property. The difficulty with a, uh, that in the fact that there's no property tax paid on this particular site is that's not a collectible way of enforcement on a water or sewage bill like it is on a business or on a residential. But if if the city or anyone else buys this property, it'll be th that'll be deducted. You know, at the at time the of buyer sale. will pay that. Yeah, it has to be paid. No, the well, seller will deduct the it seller from the seller pay it. will the, deduct it from the purchase price. Right. Yes, it's in the purchase agreement that it says at closing, if there are any sort of utility bills, which includes water that have not been paid, then they must be deducted from the purchase. But I'm price. curious, what is their thought process as to, you know, since September of last year, they've not paid this crazy amount that any resident would have to pay, and any business owner would have to pay? What, I mean, well, there, I'm sure they've got 15000 There is There is a significant problem, in, in my opinion, in the accounting department at the county. We are somewhere around, correct me if I'm wrong, John, 700000 we owe them on uh, CSO basin fees. We have not been billed. We know that at some point we're going to get billed, but who would run a business that you had $700,000 of a collectible and that affects our water and sewer budget and I'm not, we're not going to pay until we get a bill and we haven't received the bill. And, and at one point, that amount was close to a million and a half. And then, and then they got a call and they said, you haven't paid us. And we said, we haven't seen a bill. So then they got us a bill and we paid it. I mean, we have the money, it's escrow, we know we owe that money. But I'm telling you that I know. Well, if I, if I may, we, we owe that subject to our legal arguments Bad against with them, them right. with yeah. respect to the transfer of the CSO yeah. basin. Right. But I mean, the, the difficulty in this situation is that you raise this issue in this fashion, we potentially are going to be raising, you know, whatever it is here, 14,000 or something, as opposed to 700,000. Um, so especially since we're, you know, working through this agreement, my tendency would be to say, leave it alone, at least for the time being, given the fact that uh, if, if they really wanted to make more of a stink about things, they could end up saying, well, you owe us 700000 Even though, again, we feel that our legal position is correct, but it is one where, uh, uh, where the only way it would end up being appropriately resolved would be court, and we're trying to avoid that. And is, is the, the, somebody operating the banquet hall now, 
Yeah. So if we don't renew the business license, they have to close. We're and if we're buying it, it's that much. Nobody, it, it, it might be difficult for us in terms of. But the bill is to Wayne County, not to that. Right, equipment. right, right. Mr. Chairman, the uh, Kaczynski. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, this might not be an expense related specifically to the bank at all. You got to do some watering on the greens out there. That uh, right, right. And uh, it it's not appropriate to uh, criticize ourselves. We are county. We somehow got leadership that uh, don't even pay attention to the bills that are coming in or don't even send them out when they should be sent out. So <clears throat> it be as it is, let's, let's string them along until we can uh, get to a point where uh, we're in control and then we'll... But we have since September yep. of last year. And, and before that, we, yeah. uh, if you ask Councilwoman Horvath when she gets back, uh, you can... She'll tell you how many times she's on the phone with them in, in past history about, uh, hey, let's get these water bills paid. Because everybody is taking advantage of us, uh, particularly in the county, and uh, and no repay, they don't pay us for that kind of service. They our, give us a percent or two extra. And, but we our county commissioner, our county commissioner, does help us in this. Oh yes. yeah, no, there's no yeah. question. Yeah. This is Webb not a reflection of Diane Webb. Yeah, this she helps us. She really does. Internal issues. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chair, Councilman Musket. Maybe I missed it along the line. But what would happen to this fourteen thousand five hundred dollars if we don't buy the golf course? We can foreclose if the well, county were to keep it operating, or somebody else buys it. They have to pay it. No, he, the the mechanism we use is uh, we'll go to our Wayne County Commissioner and we ask her to intercede, and she does and we get a check. <clears throat> and that, unfortunately, has been how the process has been working <coughs> the last few years. And that's what we will do. I, I'm kind of agreeing with Councilman uh, Abdella, but I see the urgency in getting this done here. Well, just the same, you know, it, it's all about relationships, unfortunately, Correct. when it comes Correct. to the county. So we need to maintain those relationships. We can sit here and criticize their accounting all we want. And as long as we have a mechanism in place that makes this work without ruff, ruffling too many feathers and making our, our lives miserable here, our, our residents, I, I, have to agree I think with we, you. we use our diplomacy at the maximum that we can. We might be shooting ourselves in the foot a little bit as far as wrapping up the deal if the sale, if we do buy it. And, and some other things that we are yeah. dealing with them on. There's a, a multitude of, uh, I don't know what you say, disagreements. That was the issue, like, for example, I remember years ago with the library and payments for the library. And the yeah, we've had, we've had a number of issues that are very significant dollar items that generally have to do with, like, water and sewer and those types of issues that uh, um, we, I think we have to be careful about, or that would be my recommendation. I understand the, the, the difficulties and the frustration, but at least for what it's worth, that would be my suggestion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of renewing the business license for High Grade Steakhouse and War Warren Valley Golf and Banquet Center, please say aye. 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 No. Those opposed? No. Oh. That was five yeses and one no. That ends the regular business portion of our meeting. Any announcements from anybody at the table? Any announcements? Uh, Mr. Chair. Councilman Musket. Um, all I know it's 4th of July season again and here we go with the fireworks. Um, they seem to start two weeks before the 4th of July and go two, sometimes three weeks after the 4th of July. I wish people would understand that you can't do this it's the day of, the day before, the day of, and the day after. Uh, I don't know, I'm not a policeman. Don't pretend to be, don't pretend to know what they go through. Um, I just wish we could do a little bit more somewhere along the line. If, if we increase the patrols when people call, we get better response time on it. Uh, I urge people, they can't say, well, somebody down the street is doing it. Uh, you gotta give an address uh, because a policeman is not gonna go <clears throat> driving down, up and down every 
street in, in a subdivision looking for it. You got to give an address and hopefully the police department can work out a situation where they, they, they can get more patrols on the road uh, for these fireworks that are being done illegally at the time. Um, I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'd like to make a, a, a quick comment on a, on a very important issue. Uh, we are in the process of hiring full-time dispatchers and are advertising the position as we do for all full-time positions. I received an email over the weekend and was very troubled by what I subsequently found on social media. Some people have decided to claim that these are temporary positions only and not to bother filing, filling out an application for the position. Apparently these are the same people that convinced a few dispatchers last year to quit uh, their jobs. It, I would hope that nobody is deterred by these comments, but knowing that this is all politically driven to the detriment of the city, I feel that I have to make the public aware that we are hiring full-time dispatchers and we have no intentions of terminating them at any time. I also want to say if you're looking for a position, and this is a very challenging position, and, and you have an interest to even consider this, please call or visit our human resource department. We need dispatchers. We have approximately six or seven openings at the moment. Thank you. Anyone else? I again want to have everyone remember uh, Councilwoman Horvath. Uh, remember her and your thoughts and prayers as she goes through some health ordeal. Um, uh, wish those uh, who uh, uh, observed Ramadan a happy and blessed Eid and hope they had a reflective uh, uh, and pleasant Ramadan and spent some time with family at the uh, Eid holiday. Regarding the medical marijuana ordinance, um, the mayor had the mayor and our city attorney had been working on uh, uh, updates to our medical marijuana ordinances, and I had, had brought it up also. And there was a proposal or a a sample ordinance that was given to us. We had some good discussion. Um, I don't want anybody to think that we've made up our mind. We everybody understands that at the state level, that's where it's decided whether someone can use uh, medical marijuana to what extent this far from a zoning standpoint that's something that the city has to look at and it's a new use uh, I know I haven't made up my mind so I'd like to hear what what members of the public think uh, you can email uh, me via the clerk's office or contact any of us but it's something we're considering and studying mr. chairman uh, 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 councilman yeah, Corporation um, Council Miatki. Yes, um, um, Mr. Roberts had ended up sending an email trying to clarify what the 1215, namely the December 15th timeline is. It's not an end date. It's the first date that uh, licenses will end up being given. So instead of, so you have more time. So it's not a deadline for exactly a decision. So just to, just to clarify that, I think uh, everyone was kind of feeling like there was a real rush and you really do have some more time with regard to that issue. And also, I don't know if it was yesterday or today, there was an article in one of the major Detroit dailies and apparently the first commission meeting happened. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't offer any rulings. In fact, they said we have a lot of work to do and we'll be informing the public later in the year. Yeah, so there's it's it, it's a, it's a newer issue, and there's a lot to be understood about it, and a lot to be studied. Thank you, Corporation Council, for that update. Any other announcements? <clears throat> uh, hello, Council Chair and Mayor. I just want to talk about a couple of upcoming events at the library. Uh, first off, this Friday, June 30th at Carolyn Kennedy Library at 1 p.m. and Saturday, July 1st at JFK Library at 1 p.m. We will be having our summer reading program kickoff parties. This year's theme, Build a Better World, will be celebrated with games, treats, and crafts. Everyone can register and learn how to earn rewards for all the reading. I am sure you will all do throughout the summer. So come on out and enjoy a season of literacy and laughter. 
Also next Friday, July 7th at 1 p.m. at JFK Library, we will be having a Lego party. Children ages 4 to 17 are invited to build with Legos, Lincoln Logs, and Connects. Any donations of building materials are also appreciated. That's all for now, uh, but a lot more to come this summer, so thank you for your time and see you at the library. Uh, Thank you, Mike. To give that Lego, I've got a couple family members that are. Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> that might, they might find Yeah, that's uh, Friday, July 7th at 1 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Recreation Director Kenneth P. Greibel, why don't you get up and go ahead? Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, June 7th through the 11th, the city celebrated their 35th annual Spirit Festival. And I'd like to give a, uh, a report on it. Uh, the numbers are good. Uh, weather was, was extremely good to us. And the crowds uh, were record crowds this year. We had the largest Wednesday ever attended at the festival, and then Saturday outdid last year's biggest Saturday ever. So now we have a new record day. Uh, and overall, this was the highest attended uh, festival to date, so we're we're still we're still growing. Uh, the one thing that we had changed in our advertising is that we went to Facebook for the first time. We went to social media, and we hit it pretty hard. And I think we were able to get to some. Uh, other people that maybe did not know about our event or didn't know as much about it because we were able then to advertise our individual entertainment acts and our our, our, our carnival midway and all the all the other features of the festival evidently it worked it was appealing and and the numbers show uh, our profit for this year uh, was $9,397.75. And we are probably one of the few festivals that do cover all their costs or even go beyond. Uh, and uh, so we're very proud of that, uh, that fact. Uh, you know, this couldn't be done without a, a, a tremendous team effort. And I know we always hear that word team, but if you don't have a team working, and in Dearborn Heights, I, I mentioned this before, we have a tremendous team. And it starts with the mayor, city council, and all the elect officials and everybody uh, sitting at this table that give their support and help on the event. But the individual departments that really help out, and the first I'd like to mention is our building and maintenance department. They're the ones that do all the setup, and they have to do all the, I hate to say, the dirty details that. Uh, that maybe go unnoticed, but if they aren't done, they're noticed. And uh, they do a tremendous job, and they stay up on things. And, and um, uh, Mike Blackburn, who heads that department, did a great job. DPW gets all their signs up. HR, you probably say, how does HR involve? Well, we have to hire a lot of people for our parking just for that weekend. And so they work with us in getting those people through and processed in time and, and so that we can get them aboard and then for a smooth transition. Uh, comptroller's office, you know, getting all the checks out that we have to get and all the requests we have for all the people that have to be paid. Uh, Bob Amcraft for doing, coordinating the TV show with the mayor that we did, which is very helpful, and then doing some other advertising for us. Thank you very much. Uh, our police department, who I had mentioned before, very proactive, and that's why I think we're so successful of not having a major incident at our event, is our police don't wait for things to happen, then react. They're proactive in noticing things and then trying to be ahead of it versus, you know, uh, going from behind. And then our uh, firemen, uh, uh, the union, I have great accolades for them. We probably have the finest uh, first aid. Uh, they, they volunteer uh, all the all the men in the, in the fire department volunteer their time, and we have a around the clock a first aid station that uh, will uh, attend to anybody's needs. I'm happy to announce that there weren't any major incidences. There might have been a little bit of heat stroke. There may have been a, 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 an abrasion here or there, but overall, uh, unfortunately, they're like the Maytag man. They were a little bit lonely over there at times, but uh, it was great PR because I know they were getting pictures taken with little kids and things like that. So it, it's just a, a, another great feature of our festival and all the all the volunteers that that uh, helped out and if I missed anybody I do apologize G uh, Jared Will Willems yeah I was gonna great. get to that last I was gonna get last and last but not least I just want to make sure on, on all the city departments and cable and everybody you know you're, you're seeing the type of team that comes together and uh, really makes my job as chairman very very easy and and pulling this event off each year uh, and then last but not least I'd like to mention as my my committee who I work very closely with and the first person, of course, I'd like to mention is Jerry Willems. He's the only other charter member of this group other than myself who have been here for the all, all three, one of the festivals. Uh, I, my wife, Peggy, who ha ha took care of the Taste of the Heights. Uh, uh, Kim Constant, Deputy Director, uh, uh, 
takes care of the food areas and the ice and all the other little details that need to be done. Uh, Mike Henniger took care of the parking, all those parking issues, uh, and getting the staff to, to coordinate all the parking lots that we have to you know, maintain and, and supervise. Uh, and Marty O'Sullivan, who's the chairman of the Parks and Recreation Commission, takes care of the adult beverage area with the other recreation commissioners. So that, that's kind of our whole team. And you can see it, 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 it takes quite a few people to pull this off. And uh, once again, I, I think a tremendous success that we all as a community can be very proud of. Thank you. Great, great. Thank nice you. Nice job, Ken. Nice job. Thank you. Any other announcements? Steve. Steve Roberts. Go ahead, Steve. I'll go after Steve. He's older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, you say so. <laughs> Steve Roberts of the Watershed Committee. Uh, this Thursday, we are tending to our three rain gardens. If anybody wants to learn how to cover up weeds, the environmental way of covering all the weeds, we will be doing it in two of the rain gardens. One of the rain gardens we are going to be planting and weeding in number one. Uh, I would like to have some help from any adults that know uh, gardening and anybody who wants to learn how to do the correct way of environmentally safe way of Friendly killing way. weeds. And anybody who has any gas or uh, power, uh, electric powered uh, weed whackers, please come and help us weed whack the areas we have to. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. This is at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, Richard A. Young Center, 5400 yes. McKinley, correct? Right. At 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. Right, thank you. We'll have some Honor Society students there. and <clears throat> We're hoping to have students. We haven't had any feedback from them yet. Usually we something. do, they scatter, yeah. but we are going to try to do it environmentally safe. And, and you can use the gas-powered equipment yes. too? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Our city clerk, Walter Krasiewicz. Um Just an update on the election. Uh, by the time uh, we meet again at, here at the council, the absentee ballots will have been sent out. Um, we have received partial delivery of some of our new equipment. We're still awaiting other pieces. Um, you can get an absentee ballot all the way up to Saturday before the election. So um, if you need one, 791-3432. Um, we can still use a couple of election workers. If you know anybody who's interested, um, you can um, send them my way. And finally, I just I want to make a mention of one thing. Um, with this new equipment, we have new handicap um, assist equipment, um, which consists of a um, computer monitor screen and a printer. And it comes in boxes, and that's the way it's shipped. And if we wanted to buy cases, it would cost $400 a piece. Um, I want to give a little recognition to uh, one of the people that worked for me, um, Dennis Sabota. Um, I came back one day, he had the old case out, and had some stuff laid out and said, we can kind of do this, we can kind of do that. And um, by the time we got done, we have been able to figure out how to alter the case and save um, $8,000. So um, thank you for your help and your, your brain and your um, hard work. We, uh, we appreciate that savings on behalf of the city. Um, once again, if you have any election questions, 791-3432. Thank you. Any other announcements? Uh, Carol, go ahead. Don't look at me like that. Be nice. My name's Carol Stewart. I am the past president of the Southwest Dearborn Heights Neighborhood Association. I've been out of business for a little while because my mother passed away and I was doing um, care for her. I was out of the city a lot. I've come back in the last three months since my mom died, and I've been reading Facebook, and I don't understand what is happening to this community. What people wanted when I started 
this the association was ordinance they wanted their properties taken care of they wanted people to have good looking homes now we have ordinance people and i get on facebook and they're calling them stupid and idiots and i'm sorry this is not right that we have these people they're doing their jobs also when I was first started, all I heard about was pe people growing marijuana in the house next door to me. I want this stopped. We've got to do something. Now the city has a chance to do something about it, get this taken care of, and they're dragging their feet on it. You know, if you have one sterile or two sterile facilities, it's better than 5,700 houses that are growing pot in their homes. And I can tell you quite a few of them. I'm really ashamed of the residents. I really am. I think you should have more thought for the people that are trying to take care of your city and trying to get it to look properly. And I have to say that our ordinance director is doing a good job and his people are not stupid and they are not idiots. And I think that the ones that are saying this should be reprimanded. And I just did. Thank you. Thank you for compliment. Anyone else? Anyone else? Go and state your name in the street you live on. Is it the right time? Yes. Okay. Uh, Rachel Kapolanski. I live on Gertrude Street. Uh, I was here last month, or rather last, uh, during the last meeting, and brought up the problem of um, the box elder bug. Bugs on the south end of Dearborn Heights. Um, I uh, was asked to submit a letter. Uh, I brought that in the following day, gave one copy to the mayor and one to the uh, uh, council chairperson. Um, I guess I'd like to know uh, if uh, uh, anything has been done or if anything will be done about this problem because the problem persists. We have uh, discovered infestations in the south end and the north end, in all sections of the city, there's mm -hmm. been infestations. Uh, Mr. Zimmer, because of uh, health considerations in his family, is not here today. Uh, I will get a response for you in the next couple of days. He's got the arborist schedule. Okay, so the arborists will be, but I, I went to a couple uh, locations in other parts of the city and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, but unlike your situation, um, one group that I saw that the woman asked me to come out and look at, uh, it was in a um, flower garden area, and, and I, I can't count how many were there. Mm -hmm. uh, so th this thing is spreading very quickly, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we're ready to do battle. Yep. Very good, I appreciate that. Uh, just a comment about the uh, fireworks and the police response. Uh, we had an incident in my neighborhood um, the year when uh, th the fireworks were, we were not supposed to do them because it was a hot and dry summer. I can't remember, was that last year? Anyway, a police, the police were called, they did come out, but, um, and they were showed the address, you know, where this was occurring. Uh, but they they told us that uh, the the restriction was not enforceable. In other words, that they couldn't do anything. It wasn't within their authority or their power to stop the fireworks from being. So so if the police chief is here, uh, maybe you could inform your policeman as to what the policy is, so that in the event that uh, somebody is called, you know, some that someone calls the police department on a day when. Um, when fireworks are not supposed to be um, shot off, uh, that the policeman will know how to deal with, with it properly. Thank you. Ms. Kibelanski, I, I did remember hearing that so the wood pile where you think maybe the problem originated from and debris, that's been moved? Right, right. Well, we, we kind of took care of that. But uh, in the meantime, you know, I had stones all along the two sides of my house, and all of those were removed. Um, 
pail by pail, and uh, and then I was looking on the other neighbors in the other neighbor's yard, and I found a, uh, you know, a nest of them there. So we we weeded that whole area alongside the wall, or rather alongside the the fence. So. They can be found everywhere, uh, you know, like uh, it's really hard to control. I, I don't have any plants in my yard. I don't have any trees. I don't have any plants. Uh, and yet uh, they're all over my house, you know, every day. Today, I, I've been, I was killing them today. Uh, so, you know, they are a problem. But I'm glad that something's going to be done about it. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Chief. Or uh, still captain as of captain. now. Captain. Yeah. You got a promotion. <laughs> Thanks for the promotion. <laughs> Um, as to the fireworks, uh, last year it was trying to guess from what she's reported, it would have been a fire issue, <coughs> not a police issue at the time, if it happened the day before, during, or after the holiday. So that's probably what happened with, in your instance. But we need proper reporting uh, the address and we need to see them lighting the fireworks, unfortunately, to be enforced. Um, so we need the proper address, we need to see him doing it, and then we can take some action. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Captain. And don't hesitate to call. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Deb Brown, England. Um, the uh, mic around. Yeah. Um, I think our residents need some clarification on the 911 consolidation deal. Um, so we have a little timeline that I want to throw together and I'll try to be as quick as possible. On April 18th, the mayor presented a letter to the council requesting them to sign the letter of intent with Dearborn um, for the uh, combined dispatch. In the letter, the mayor stated that he and Mayor O'Reilly had started negotiations on this two years prior and he was excited that it had finally come to fruition. The mayor said in the letter that he recommended that the city council adopt a resolution signif signifying an interest to con contract with Dearborn for 911 emergency dispatch services. On the 19th, on June 19th of last year, um, the administration attempted to shut down an open meeting to give the residents information in regards to the 911 dispatch. Um, thankfully, that was not successful and the meeting was held. July 19th of 2016, the day, this is the day that the pitch people came from Dearborn to try to sell all the residents on the 911 consolidation. Um, at this time, we had approximately 11 dispatchers, and today we're down to approximately four. And this is due to the uncertainty of the consolidation. Now we have to use significant overtime dollars for the police to now answer the phones. July 26, 2016, at a city council meeting, the mayor reiterated that him and Mayor O'Reilly discussed the 911 consolidation on his TV program approximately two, it has been working for two years. January 4th, an email was sent out to the members of City Council stating that on December 28th, Mr. Miyake received a draft version of the agreement between Dearborn and Dearborn Heights. And the mayor wrote that he had received the same email January 2nd and was reviewing it. Now come January 2014th, when the mayor was questioned about that, the mayor was asked about the 911 contract and he said, he saw Mayor O'Reilly and he said he would have a document sent to him and more likely a meeting. The mayor then said that he was not contacted and he didn't have anything. So now there is no contract despite the G January 4th email sa saying to the contrary. So there was a contract. On April 14th, there was supposed to be an open meeting, which never occurred because Dearborn canceled it. It says now it's June and we're in election season. The mayor stated during candidate forums that we are not moving forward, nor would I suggest moving forward with the study. It has proven not to be economically feasible. I don't see this as a possibility. When did we receive a contract to know that it wasn't economically feasible anymore? So all of a sudden, now it's election season and this is no longer economically feasible. We are told we would get to see the contract. On one hand, the mayor tells us the council, there is a draft version, which they never saw. And then the same month, the mayor says there's no contract. First you say you support the consolidation, and then you say you don't support it. Is, is, is this just a stall tactic until after the election? And it seems like the administration is making a serious issue, a political issue. Try to wrap up. Mr. Chairman, yes. I want to respond to that because that is totally inaccurate. Let's, let's get the facts. 
the original discussion between Mayor O'Reilly and I was the consolidation was to take place in Dearborn Heights. Dearborn Heights was to be the consolidation and all the dispatching was to be done in the city of Dearborn Heights, and that's a fact. At Dearborn then came and said there is, we can get a grant from the state of Michigan that the governor gives out to study a combined joint dispatch. In that particular process, the Dearborn people convinced Mayor O'Reilly that they ought to take control of it and not have Dearborn Heights do the consolidation. That's where it took a major tangent. And at that point, the, the cost uh, ballooned exorbitantly. I do not have a copy of contract, and we would, and as I indicated, we we're taking steps and have been taking steps. We've been negotiating, and in fact, the next meeting you will see on the agenda, and we have indicated to all the council a continuation of Dearborn Heights dispatch. And constantly, people are saying, well, you're in, you're contracting it out. I am not contracting I don't have the power to contract it out. It'd have to go to the council. But just like Dearborn Heights got a grant and study taking over the fire department of Garden City, you're gonna, the state offers these grants and it only behooves, anybody who would not study a particular suggestion is a fool and you learn things as you go through those studies. I don't see the, the uh, and I have indicated this, I do not see a uh, dispatching, a joint dispatching with Dearborn at the Dearborn Center. I can't make that any clearer. And I've said it a hundred times, but you keep distorting my comments. At, at what point was I, I there think a she price already discrepancy? had her two minutes. I had my two yeah, minutes, let's move on. Yeah. So I would suggest to the council members, I'll give you two seconds, suggest to the council members that since we are no longer in negotiations and no longer, it is no longer feasible and the mayor does not want it, that the rest of the residents don't want it, that we now send a letter of withdrawal for our letter of intent, formally withdrawing from any further negotiations with them so that they are aware we're going to hire our own dispatchers, we don't need them. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Please stand up and say your name and the street you live on. Ali Almona, uh, live on Nightingale, I'm running for City Council. No, no uh, campaign. Go ahead. Let's my two comments is that um, there's a time frame for the garbage truck to pick up the cans because we got ticketed last, uh, last month because uh, it, it seems like it takes a while for them to pick up their cans and then uh, we have to keep our vehicles in the driveway for a long time because my kids they have to go back and forth and then it's some kind of confusing uh, what time is this time frame for them to pick it up uh, my second comment it's uh, about the fire uh, fire works an incident last year I got my garage burned down on the 4th of July of last year and I haven't heard anything from the city or from the from the uh, police department about that uh, an incident and I have reports uh, is there is anything uh, the city can do for the reimbursement because my insurance does not cover the garage so to your first question um is this time frame for the garbage truck to pick up the cans? So you mean for, for the cars not to be on the street? Exactly. Seven to seven. Seven to seven. seven, to seven. Garbage seven can be picked up until seven. That's contract for the trash haulers, okay. seven to seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone so, else? Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. About the garage. For me just uh, my name is Bill Bright. If, I live on Arnold just, Street. Hang on, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Comment with respect to something. Again, state law prohibits the use of city equipment and so on and so forth for purposes of electioneering. It's part of the reason why the public common procedures say that you cannot end up doing anything that has to do with electioneering. So, uh, people should not make any comments about the fact that they're running I mentioned for that, office yeah. or things along those lines. And that's uh, otherwise we potentially violate state law with respect to providing a, essentially a forum at the cost of the taxpayers. Thank you. We'll remember that. Everybody remember that in their comments. Go ahead. Okay. State uh, your name in the street. My name is Bill Bright. I live in Arnold Street. I had a couple questions. This concerns the Warren Valley golf course purchase. 
My first question is, and I haven't heard it, so I'm wondering if there is an answer to this. How is it going to be paid for if you purchase it? Do you want me to respond to that? Well, in, yeah, oh. direct your comments. I'm sorry. To how is the golf course, if we purchase Please. it, how is it going to be yeah, paid? Yeah, we have, we have $5.4 million in our fund balance and the purchase price of $1.8 million plus some related expenses for due diligence and other and that's where we propose the money come from. So it's the general fund? So the surplus in the general fund. Surplus. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if that, you know, I, I, I have a little bit of a hard time with that because if the city can't afford to have their employees working five days a week, but oh. they can turn they can turn around and spend 1.8 million of a surplus. I, I I I I don't see how that adds up. Well, the one thing you need to understand is the four-day work week is per a union agreement that was done when the last recession hit, and uh, over 25 percent of the city's income disappeared. So it takes a agreement with the union to go back to the five days which we're in the process of doing okay so down the road probably be back to five days. yeah I, I hope that in the next uh you know i, I union contracts I, I hesitate to give a deadline but we have been discussing and uh it it's it, on behalf of all of us elected officials i told the union i wanted to get a dollar amount to go back to the five days Okay, uh, if you purchase the golf course, you're talking about keeping it a golf course, the way Absolutely. I'm understanding it. That's my That's intent. That's what the intent. Now, I, I don't know all the facts and figures either on this, I, you know, but I've heard the golf course loses from 300, uh, no, the expenses for running the golf course is between 600,000 and 800,000. They don't make any, Warren Valley runs a deficit running the golf course or they make 10,000. I'm told that you're looking, the city's looking at turning or having a contract it out, having somebody come in and run the golf course. I don't know what business would come in knowing they're going to be paying out eight, six hundred, eight hundred thousand and earn ten thousand. I don't know who told you eight hundred thousand. Uh, well, that, that was thrown around at one well, time. Well, the not. internal audits does not. Uh, that was last done by Wayne County Internal Audit did not sh it showed a very close uh, break even if not a profit from both the golf course and the banquet center. You are absolutely correct. We don't have the expertise and what we talked about is getting to, um, and that's why we're going through our due diligence right now. So we're trying to determine through golf experts and other banquet center experts whether or not uh, that thing can be run profitably or not. So the purchase is not complete. We're surveying the land. We're looking, um, in fact, I've got, uh, uh, I'm in the process of auditing the book, so to speak, and getting assistance through our um, auditors, Plant Moran, and, and we will turn all that information to all of us and we'll look at it before we sign on the dotted line. Mr. Bright, remember, so we all would hope that Wayne County would continue to operate as a public golf course. They've said they're not. So the alternative is to to have it be developed possibly or for the city to buy it until we control our own destiny. So, But we're not at the point yet where we've made any purchase. Will our destiny be bailing out a white elephant? If, yeah, but uh, you have, the golf course doesn't. But you have to it. look at the other alternative. If it developed, it was made very clear to us that we're responsible for all the water and sewer, especially the sewer. We, who knows? We could be talking 50 million to 100 million dollars. We don't want to replicate what happened, to, unfortunately, to our fellow residents in the South End, in which a development went in and then all, all along the creek and then people's homes and basements flood on a continuous basis. And now we find out through the Army Corps of Engineers it'll take $350 million to fix that. We d so we've got to be cognizant of that fact also. The best of all worlds would have been the county continuing to operate that as a golf course. But they made it very clear 
that they were not going to do that. They were in the process of selling it. So you have to look at the alternatives also, and that all have to be weighed. Golf course fails, would you let it go to seed? I, I still think that would that, be the only other option. Well, I still think that we need to have our due diligence yeah. uh, perform before we even uh, we even look at that. I, I personally believe that this is a great buy for the city. Uh, as you know, um, when you get somebody to manage a business, that business is going to perform based on that manager's ability to perform it. Uh, with Plant Moran um, and the outreach they have to other cities and municipalities that have golf courses and some of the private entities that manage golf courses out there are all going to be uh, extended this RFP. And um, there's money in this golf course. There's money in that property. Um, I don't think you should jump to conclusions right now. Let this due diligence take place, and let's play it out and see where we land. Mr. Chair? Uh, one other thing. Hold, hold on, sir. Go ahead, Councilman Muskie. You know, a, a business is only going to be as good uh, with the tools that they have. I, I'm not 100% convinced that the county gave this management company everything they needed to succeed. I mean, uh, th th you know, you see this in business, even even large corporations where I worked. If they didn't give me the tools to do my job proficiently, you, you can't do it, and, and then you, you're set up to fail. So, you know, I, I believe that we can give them the tools to succeed uh, better than what they've been receiving in the last 10, 15 years. <coughs> if you can uh, if wrap up, you, three minutes almost up. Okay, if, if it's purchased, Really, you have two options. Leave it a golf course, make it a golf course, or let it grow. Because you're not going to build on it. So that's you know, 1.8 million for those two options. It could work out, but if it doesn't, that was you know, what happens to the money. One last real quick thing. Um, when we were talking about due diligence, uh, I think it was stated that part of that was surveying the land where it would cost 80000 to 100000 or something like that, doing a survey, and if that's sort of correct. When does that fall into due diligence? When would you, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you have due diligence, and you go, you know, you're, you're saying all along that, hey, six weeks from now, a month from now, six months from now, we might not buy this. We might change our minds. Well, if you've spent 100000 on surveying the land and doing whatever to it, a big expense like that, and then you change your mind, so we're not going to do it. Where does some of this due diligence fit in the process? Because they would, if we're making a purchase like that, we have to make sure and know what we're, we're getting. But you've had your three minutes. Okay. So, Mayor, go ahead. Do you, do you want to say something? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Good evening, everybody. I hope, Mr. Chairman, you can be generous enough maybe to let me go over the three minutes by one minute at the most. <coughs> My name is Zuhair Abdelha, 354 Rosemary. I did read the contract between the Transitional Realty LLC and Taylor City concerning the rehabilitation of those homes which uh, they are foreclosed on. And they did put together a contract for residential only. But I found out among 153 properties they sold to this company, some of them were commercial. And one of the property was purchased in 2004 for 500,000 dollars. It was sold to Transitional uh, Realty LLC for 10 bucks. I did read this contract this contract and I did go to court with a friend of mine who sued the city for that. I hope we give Mr. Mayatki the time so he can put all the terms and conditions so our city does not sell anything below the price which is paid to the county for obtaining those properties. Second, we separate the commercial properties, how we treat them from the residential properties. Third, we have to make sure that whoever buy them is going to do something with them, not just to take them like 
in this case, the guy wanted to rent it to the person who lost it in Taylor for $900 a month. He didn't do anything to it, any development. Then he wrote in the contract he can sell it to him at $250,000 option in one year. I hope our city, you know, is... Mr. Abdelhaq, yes. was that the contractor that had the exclusive right to buy the property? Yes, the transitional realty okay. LLC. All right. That's who I mean. Okay, thank uh, you. So I just want our city to be very careful with what we do with these properties so we can get them on the payroll, I mean on the tax roll immediately, and we make sure that they, they obtain CFO immediately, and if they are rental, we make sure that I registered as rental properties, not you know to go under the carpet and they, they rent them quietly in the night. This about that subject. The second subject, um, Mr. Mayor, you have uh, mentioned uh, the mayor mentioned that we have 500 or five and a half million dollars uh, surplus. If you be kind enough, where this surplus came from, and why we have to borrow 1.2 million dollars last meeting internally to make the payroll, and why we had to borrow two million dollars to pay for the garbage cans? Where this money came from? Is it a grant for a specific thing restricted, or it is money really we have in the budget we can use for anything? If you have five and, and half million dollars, Mr. Mayor, in the budget surplus, you got my vote. Well, the city does, but uh, Mayor. Yeah, uh, you, you asked me really three different things. One is that the city funds, to some extent, and you touched on a very good point, uh, the rubbish cans and the sanitary is in a restricted account. And so consequently, the money that was there could only be utilized for a sanitation related cost. So by when we bid out the contract and we went to a different company, when waste management, although both contracts are very close, so we would have been able to do something similar with either contract. It's the money from that savings that we're able to pay over time for the uh, canisters, the garbage containers. Okay. So that's one thing. Uh, we do have $5.5 million surplus as of uh, probably going to be a little bit higher after June 30th because our fiscal year ends on June 30th. I have an idea how much it's going to grow, but I just as soon wait until it's subject to audit because there's a lot of variables. The, the difficulty is that um, cash and accounting are not necessarily the same. So, and you're a businessman. I may go in and buy some jewelry, but you might give me credit. So maybe you're waiting for $20,000 from me. On your books, you sold it, you, you put in the 20,000, but it's in a receivable. The state of Michigan is very slow on their payments to us. So in that, what happens is uh, we collect taxes for the city once a year. So consequently, all this money kind of comes in around August, September, October, and it's got to handle it through the year. Uh, the state of Michigan's getting slower and slower on their state shared revenue payments. That's a significant portion. Uh, there's other agencies that are slow. So while we have five and a half million, some of it is not cash. So what happens is just before we get to the year where we're gonna get that big influx of money from property taxes, we start to run our cash down. And so that's when we're in a situation now where we balance, we borrow from other funds that have the opposite situation where they have cash. And then as soon as we get the state shared revenue payment, we get the property taxes, we pay those funds off. We also pay them an in interest, so it's not fair for a fund, uh, a sanitary fund or a library fund to incur the borrowing of money and not get interest. So what John Riley does is he takes the um, interest rate that we earn on our money 
and that is paid to that other fund by the general fund to make them whole. And then we also have, I think Mr. Miyake writes the agreement, so it's, it's very legalistic in regards to when we borrow the money. But that's the key point. Uh, you have five and a half million, but cash flow wise, you may not, and it's because of receivables basically here. My understanding, our budget has only $126,000 surplus as we speak right now. If I, well, that, that would if be, I am correct to the, to the closest number. Th that, that is true, but you have to also remember that we're in the middle of contract negotiations. So there's been money set aside for contract negotiations and for a couple other liabilities. Uh, I believe that we won't need to utilize all that, and so that there would be a larger general fund. Uh, but, um, the, yeah, we, we show that this coming year for 2000, starting uh, July 1st to June 30th of 2018, I would expect that we would add more back to that 5.4 million. I hope, Mr. Mayor, since we're going to expect that much money, and my understanding that to open the city for five days, it will cost around half a million dollars extra. I hope the, negoti the negotiation will take that into account and we open five days a week. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anyone else, please come up and state your name and the street you live on. Hello, my name is Julia Homeyet. I live on Parkway Circle. I'm here to ask the council to uh, to regulate medical marijuana in the city of Dearborn Heights. I think it would benefit. Um, my opinion is it shouldn't be by schools, any religious <coughs> mosque, church, chapel, or any of that. Um, I would like them to be out of homes because a lot of us have children, and I would like it to be regulated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, please come up and state your name and the street you live on. Follow up quickly, Shiler Engel, 50346 Van Dyke, Shelby Township, Michigan. Uh, I provided you tonight a packet with an alternative ordinance. I know that the city has been diligent in preparing that ordinance, and I have a few comments that uh, are attached to that uh, alternative ordinance, along with a, a recent court case about regulating uh, home uses, which a court determined to be unconstitutional. The current ordinance as drafted included such a, pro such a provision, so I don't think you'd want to uh, enact an ordinance that's already been declared in part unconstitutional. Um, with that, I always am available by telephone, mail, uh, and thanks a lot. Oh, Thank you. Uh, one issue. Um, I, I did hear, I was at the same board meeting yesterday, um, the applications become available for applicants on December 15th. Uh, that's the day that we would first submit them. Um, but in order to plan, uh, we would anticipate needing the ordinance, you know, early October, or else we're going to be limited by, you know, just simply getting our ducks in a row. So uh, we would hope that an ordinance would be perhaps ready to go around Oct early October. Thank you. Anyone else, please? Come up and see your name in the street. Councilman Muskett. Is, is there, I'm gonna, I guess I can ask this through you to our corporate council. Is there um, a way that we're gonna have something by October, do you think? Well, I think what we need to end up having is uh, another probably study session where in uh, this body ends up giving Mr. Roberts and me direction as to how you want to proceed with it. Because right now, um, it's unclear to, to me and to him uh, to what degree you want to end up using the grow operation, the dispensaries, or nothing whatsoever. I, I have to apologize for not being here at the last study session. I had some personal issues at home. Um, but I'd like to see another study session, if you could do that. I will set that up. And Please, I, I'd like to see that come up real quick. Mr. Chairman, C Councilwoman I Clayton. just, I wanna say I agree. I think we, we see people who support it, there's, you know, the reasons and different needs and whatnot. But I also know there's other people who have concerns. So I think both sides need to be represented and should have input. And so through a study session open to the public, I would support that. And soon, please. Anyone else? 
I would just like to know if there, if there were a study session, it would be would it be open to the public? Yeah, but mm -hmm. and remember, we're talking about the zoning aspect of it, whether its use is, is, is decided at the state mm -hmm. level. Anyone else? Something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Move to court. Well, there was a gentleman there earlier. Well, yeah. Support. Support. Good evening, everyone.